the person holding the umbrella for me, uh, but never mind. I've been promoted. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're um, you're going to actually run the government. So, no, well, the offer wasn't made, and, right. and we didn't accept. Uh, <laughs> it was. I think two things out of that. One is re-emphasise the point. Brexit is a thoroughly bad idea, and if anybody doubted that, they should look at the last three years. Uh, and the point that uh, I know Nicola will be making this afternoon in watching the European Manifesto is a key point that we want to stop Brexit in its tracks. But the second point is about devolution, and I am very conscious of the, the way in which devolution is under attack. We saw at the Tory Party conference in, uh, in Aberdeen an attack by Michael Gove, and I made a very strong point in here. The UK government needs to decide what their attitude is. For the devolved administration. Do they support devolution or don't they support devolution? And it's really difficult to make progress on any of the issues they want to make progress on unless they're prepared to say that. And that is a point that I've made very strongly and echoed, of course, by the Welsh First Minister today and what he said in the Institute for Government, where he's made a you know, pretty strong speech at the Institute for Government about partnerships. So I think we've got, they've got some questions to answer. Am I any the wiser about the talks between Labour and the, uh, which you're about to ask me? Uh, I am none the wiser, but I'm not sure they are either. I think the talks are, are, are not proceeding in anything like a pace. So you talked, you listened to each other, and you made absolutely no progress? Well, that's the 17th meeting of the JMC. Uh, yeah, you know, like all the other meetings, the devolved administration has made their points. Uh, I think the UK government lives in a bubble of its own, and that bubble is increasingly toxic, given what is happening with Brexit. But the European elections are now an opportunity for people to state their preference and what their view is. Uh, we don't believe that Brexit is a good idea. We believe that a referendum is essential. But now there is a democratic opportunity that is going ahead. David Livingston himself, of course, had to confirm that earlier this week. That will be an opportunity for people to give their view. And I have no doubt at all that the people of Scotland will give a very decisive view. It does beg the question, what is the point of this decision? Well, that's a great question, I have to say. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've travelled further for it than you've travelled, you know, so I ask that question too. But the important thing is to make sure that the voices of the Scottish Government and the voice of the Welsh Government is heard here in Whitehall. Their deep dissatisfaction, but also their determination not to go backwards in this process, and that is a key issue. Was there any sign from the UK Government that they might want to have further negotiations with the Scottish Government at a more formal level? They are doing late. Well, the, the, the negotiation process that was discussed today is about what might happen if there was a second phase of these negotiations. The, the first phase has been atrociously handled, uh, and in terms of involving others, then it has not succeeded. There is, uh, according to the, the, the people in that meeting, an intention by the Prime Minister and others that this will go better on the second phase. I don't think the Prime Minister will be there, so I'm not sure her word counts for much on this. But in terms of any further discussions, then what we've seen so far is deeply unsatisfactory, and they know it. Have the ability to change? I don't know. Thank you very much. Just quick, quick words about you talked about devolution being on their mind by yeah. the Conservatives. Give us a well, I mean, I, I used uh, a number of examples. I mean, one of the examples I used was the uh, Michael Gove's, as I said, speech to uh, you know, the, the, the uh, Tory conference in Aberdeen. This is a speech that talks about changing the rules so that the uh, Treasury rules can be set aside and the UK government departments, which he said were all responsible for all parts of the UK, would be able to spend money in devolved areas. That's not permitted at the moment. Now, I've raised very clearly the issue. Is it the intention of the UK government to change those rules? There's no suggestion from that meeting that it is. But they need to be clear about these matters. You can't have a senior UK government minister freelancing on devolution without having a direct impact on discussions such as this. And that is a matter which needed to be said today. Why, why are you scared of being bypassed if it's more money for Scotland anyway? Uh, because I don't believe it will be more money for Scotland. I don't believe the Tories are in any way in a generous mood. It will be money taken away from the primary purposes of the Scottish Government to try and buy votes for the Tory party. It won't succeed, but that's what they'll try and do. Mr Russell, have you got any message for the one million Scots who voted for Brexit? I have a message for those one million Scots. It is, you've been deceived. I know some of my own constituents who voted for Brexit, I have to say, particularly in the fishing communities. And many of them are looking at the consequences for their businesses now and realising that that was not the right thing to do. But we haven't left yet. I am very respectful. I am very respectful of people's democratic choice. But I'm afraid this choice will not turn out to be anything other than bad for the whole of Scotland. But whether, you what voted, whether you voted yes or whether you voted no, this will be bad for the whole of Scotland. But that's what they said before, um, the, the, we said for the um, joining the Euro, and that's what they also said if we had voted yes in the first place, that it was I economic say, consequences. I hope, I hope people don't have to go through that experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,